Uh, this is a and &E 600. I'm going to be doing an abbreviated physical assessment uh, on my patient Sam. My name is Tony Bertram. Um, as I go throughout each system, I would be continuously assessing skin for things um, such as temperature, turgor, texture, color, moisture, um, edema, uh, any abnormal bruising, lesions, scars, uh, rashes, or moles. Um, I'm going to begin by doing an airway assessment. So I'll have you open your mouth for me. Nice and wide. Okay, you can keep your tongue in there. Um, he opens his mouth really wide. I would say it's like four finger breaths, which would be well over three centimeters, which is good. Um, peering into the back of the mouth, uh, I can uh, things I'm going to be looking at are his lips, his gums, buccal mucosa, uh, floor of the mouth, teeth, um, salivary ducts. Then let's see, posterior pharynx, soft palate, and then I will be glancing his tonsils. His lips, buccal mucosa, and gums do all appear to be um, uh, pink, moist, they look good, absence of any blisters. I can barely see tonsils, so I would give that a class uh, one uh, because it's not really obstructing anything. Uh, teeth do not appear chipped, broken. He, the patient does not have any dentures, which is good. Uh, I can see his soft mouth in the back, so I would give him a valley pity score of one, which is awesome. And then I'm going to do a couple of range of motion exercises with you on your neck. If you just want to kind of tilt your head to the side and to the other side. Tilt your head down a little bit. And then if you want to point the chin up towards the sky, I'm going to measure your fibro mental distance. So I'll be finding it cartilage. And then I'll measure to the tip of your mentum. And this does look pretty good. Ooh, 12 centimeters, which is um, indicative of a non-difficult intubation because it's over 7 to 8 centimeters, which is awesome. Um, when you were opening your mouth, did you have any tenderness with that? No. Nope. No tenderness with neck movement. No patient, tenderness. The patient had full range of motion. I am going to palpate your TMJ. Mm -hmm. Do you want to open and close a couple times? And if you want to thrust your jaw forward just a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, there is no crepitus, no subluxation, um, and no tenderness with uh, movement. So that completes the airway and head and neck. I'm going to have you turn a little so I can do your posterior chest. How about this way? Yeah. Okay. That looks good. Um, so initially, things I would be looking for are signs of respiratory distress. Uh, the patient is not using any accessory muscles. He doesn't have any nasal flaring. There's no cyanosis. Um, he isn't tachypnic at all. He seems to be in a pretty relaxed demeanor. Um, so that's overall good. And then for the posterior chest, I would be looking for any signs of obvious deformity, which there are none. The back is very symmetrical. It looks good. I'm going to have you take a deep deep. Big deep breath, and I'm going to palpate for symmetry. Okay. And chest rise appears symmetrical. Um, next, we're going to do some tactile pharmacist assessment. So I will have you say the phrase 99 as I'm kind of palpating your back. 99. 99. 99. 99. Four more. 99. Awesome. And then there, it's equal vibrations bilaterally, which is what we're looking for, uh, indicating there's no abnormal lung processes. Um, Let's see here. Next, I'm going to percuss over um, the patient's lung fields. And this would be the intercostal spaces. Um, there is no abnormal um, sounds heard. Uh, which is, would indicate that there's no uh, masses or consolidation of the lungs, which is awesome. Um, let's see here. Next, I'm going to also take your lung fields. I'll just have you take a big, deep breath for me when you feel a stethoscope. Lungs are clear, lateral lung fields are also clear, no diminished, no crackles, ronchi's releases. Um, next, we're going to go through a couple of tests. We're going to go over egophony, um, bronchophony, and then our whisper pectoriloquy. Um, so I will have you start by saying E when you feel my stethoscope. Loud or whisper? Say it again. Loud or whisper? Uh, loud. Oh. E. 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 Uh, the E 
sound and transitioning to an A like uh, sound so that uh, doesn't indicate any um, fluid or consolidation of the lungs. The next one for Renagopi, I'm going to have you say one, two, three in a normal tone voice. One, two, three. 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 Um, and it got louder as I kind of moved more peripherally, uh, which is good. It doesn't indicate any abnormal lung processes. Last one is going to be a whisper test, so I'll just have you whisper 99 while I also take. Um, and the whispering is barely audible, which is good. Um, so I will have you turn around and we will do our anterior chest assessment. Um, it'd probably be a little easier to watch for respiratory distress. Uh, anteriorly, you can leave patients who are good breathing if he's doing any belly breathing. Um, each section, I would continue to assess skin for those main 10 factors. Um, the skin is uh, one red tact. And then I'm going to do that same tactile phrematis. Um, I'll have you say 99 again. 99, 99, 99, 99. And he has some nice vibrations symmetrically, which is good. I will uh, palpate for some chest expansion as well. And some more more. Take deep breath. Awesome. <clears throat> um, no gross deformities, symmetrical chest expansion, everything's looking the same. I'm going to also take uh, first lung sounds and then I'll move on to heart tones just kind of all in one. Um, the five points I'm going to listen to in his heart are going to be his aortic, uh, pulmonic, herbs point, then we're going to go down to our uh, tricuspid mitral, and then afterwards we'll do uh, the apex of his heart and his PMI elevation. So take the rest for me. Lungs are clear, sounds good, you can just breathe normal. Heart sounds good, S1, S2 are present, uh, no extra audible sounds, uh, no murmurs heard. Now we're going to move on to uh, the um, point of maximal impulse. So where I'd be wanting to find that on SAM is I'm going to go mid-clavicular line on the left side, and then I'm going to go down about five intercostal spaces. Um, and it looks like it's located in about a two to three centimeter region. Um, it's not um, it's not overly strong, which is good. Now I'm going to palpate that same apex of the heart for a whole minute. Uh, rate is around 70 um, and pretty regular rhythm. So heart sounds pretty good. Uh, I think we're going to move on to the lying down portion, so I'll just stand up. And you can prop your uh, shoulders on that headrest so you're up 30 or so. Okay. How does that look? That looks pretty good. Comfortable. Yep. Um, I am going to uh, palpate the front of the chest for any heaves or lifts. And I'm also going to palpate over each uh, cardiac oscillation point. To assess for any thrills. Awesome, and I'm going to repeat the cardiac assessment. I'm 
also going to also take with the gun with the sun scope as well, which uh, I, will, I should have done while sitting up. Sounds good. Uh, no changes noted from sitting to a lying position. Uh, finally, we're going to assess for some jugular vein distension. I'll have you tilt your head off to the left and back to the right. Perfect. Um, no distension noted. I'll have you kind of glance off to the uh, left again, and we're going to measure for uh, this jugular vein's pressure. We're going to look for some slight pulsations. It looks like I can see just a couple right above um, his uh, clavicle. So I'm going to measure from his sternal notch up to where I can see the first pulsation. Uh, the number should be pretty low. Looks like around one, one centimeter or so, which would not indicate um, an elevated central venous pressure. Um, so that concludes the anterior portion of the chest. Uh, we're going to move on to the upper extremities. Um, I would be assessing skin, a little bit of lint. Uh, the skin is warm, dry, intact. No edema noted on um, either arm. I'm just going to palpate some radial pulses. Pulses are nice and strong. Uh, I, I give them about a 2 plus. And we're going to move on to the lower extremities as well. Um, skin is warm, dry, and intact. Uh, no edema that I can see. Not on the knees. No, definitely no edema. I'm also going to palpate his dorsal pedis and his posterior tibia poles on both feet. Um, pulses are good, strong in the lower extremities. I would give him a two plus. I'm also going to assess cap refill. Uh, looks like it's less than three seconds. Uh, that concludes our physical assessment. Thank you, Sam. You look to be in great health. Thank you.